welcome on the islands. Don't want you to put your feet on the ground. Your bare feet on the dirt. Ground it. Practicing more sun time, more meditation. Enjoying that peace, that space. It all outside of the disturbance of a freaking chainsaw right now. I tell you what, uh, being in the United States as someone who's a descendant of Africans who were brought here. To put it correctly, you know, uh, some must say it's been a very interesting experience, to say the least. I feel like uh, the United States is a place now where anything goes and uh, whatever happens, happens, you know, everyone's winging it, you know, everyone's just doing whatever they want and it really don't matter who they are, what position they're in. Um, what status they have, how much money they have. Uh, it doesn't matter what race they are. It doesn't matter. Uh, really, none of that even matters. But what what's very interesting is uh, when you look at history and you look at how things started how things originated. Um, it's really no wonder things turned out to be the way they were, or they are right now. It's really no wonder that uh, so much is happening right now. And uh, When you look at things like the migrant crisis, or so so they call it. When you look at things like uh, them giving those people free rent assistance, um, homes. You know, food, water, shelter, and you literally have descendants of Africans who were kidnapped and brought here or sold to come here that was in bondage for, you know, centuries that are literally still trying to recover from that, that don't get anything, you know, that don't get uh, that don't get um, any type of assistance, any type of uh, help in any way. 
that, and it's been like this for decades, you know. It's been like this for decades. And it's amazing to me that, like, by now, at this point, um, no one really cares uh, to help African-Americans Africans in America, you know, it's interesting, um, none of the United Nations, none of the, uh, other powerful nations in the world don't really, uh, care to take notice at what's happening to black people in the United States and what's been happening to black people in the United States. Um, Very interesting to me, you know, because it's been so long, you know, it's been so long. It's been so long. You know, you got the lynchings. You have Jim Crow. You have all the black codes, you have sundown laws, you have the um, segregation laws, it's amazing how once upon a time, you know, black athletes weren't allowed to play in any of the major sport leagues. That's amazing to me now because it's like uh, really since the 50s and up, I'd say, ever since the 1950s, and, and we dominated sports. We dominated football. We dominated uh, basketball. There was a time we were dominating baseball, but you see how they, you know, slowly got us out of that. You know, if the kid's not getting taught something early on, they ain't going to be good at it later on. And they're not going to have any interest in it, you know, taking a sport like baseball out of the hood or out of uh, black communities. You're simply not going to have any, you know, kids that they may want to play. They may want to learn, but they just simply don't have the support or resources or any type of extracurricular activities going on that uh, emphasize and, you know, focus on baseball. But yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Being black in the United States, it's like you're not supposed to have nothing. You're not supposed to learn nothing. Like you're not supposed to know nothing. You're not supposed to own nothing. I had an older, an older gentleman, an older, you know, black gentleman tell me, uh, you know, it takes work to keep a certain race of people or a certain culture or a certain group of people, you know, in line and in order. He said, that takes work. So it's like, uh, they're more worried about us than we are, you know what I'm saying? It's like, they're more worried about us than we ever did since civil rights, maybe. Civil rights is probably the last era. 
civil rights is probably the last point in time where black people worried about black people. That was probably the last time. Now, it's like we don't care enough to uh, really make a difference or change, if anything. You know, um, a lot of us are too busy surviving, too busy um, just distracted doing other things. I guess to really want to unite and come together. There was a story in the news where this homeless man was like on the porch of this, of the home of this single mother and her little daughter. And this homeless man, he was just like, I guess, just tripping out, bugging out. And it got to the point where he, like, threw something through her front window. And it, like, shattered the glass. And this was her and her daughter. You know, but uh, long story short, you know, it took, took the, you know, because there wasn't a man in the house, it, it took the neighbors having to kind of unite and come together to fend off this homeless man or whatever he was that was, uh, you know, disturbing the peace and just becoming a danger to this woman and her daughter. But that right there goes to show you how much, you know, we need each other. You know, it's like, what if he would have broke into the house and it had just been her and her daughter, you know? Uh, two is always better than one in many situations, in many cases. But the black community has to figure something out that doesn't compromise the well-being of our future and our children future you know um, it's like if black people can find something to agree on and to agree about